Hello everyone, this is Eric IT. In this video, you will learn what is OSPF and how to configure it. So let's get started. OSPF, short for Open Shortest Path First, is a routing protocol and what it does is when enabled on a router, it starts broadcasting packets that describe its own local links. This is done via the multicast addresses 224.0.0.5 and .6. And then, all the other routers listening in these multicast addresses start building their own routing table based on the information received. So, the OSPF is a link state routing protocol, which means that it creates a database where it keeps all the routes that its neighbor advertises, but only those in the same area as his. That's to avoid network congestion by excessive control traffic. All the routers must have at least one interface in the backbone area or area 0, because all the advertised packets from routers are confined to their own area, and that's where the backbone area plays its role, by sending a summarized form of the topology to the rest of the areas. This is done by the AVRs, these are the area border routers. As its name says, these are the routers at the border of two or more areas, in this case, it's score 1, 2, and 3, the AVRs. Now, let me mention a couple of concepts you need to know when dealing with OSPF. One is the cost. This, the cost is the OSPF metric that it uses to calculate the best path to a route. The cost is a value defined by the speed of the link where that route was received on. And the other is the administrative distance which OSPF uses 110. This is important to keep in mind when dealing with a router that runs multiple routing protocols because when a router receives the same route through different protocols, it's going to pick the best one and it's going to be the one with the lower administrative distance. Now, let me explain the topology that we are going to, to be using for this lab exercise. We have three core routers at the center and those will be running the backbone area. So each router connected to them will advertise its own local networks and thus the core routers will advertise the, the networks to the other areas. Um, let's, buy, let's start by configuring the first core router which is C1. Let's go to the terminal and at the configuration mode, let's run the command router OSPF and the number of the process ID. This process ID is just a number to identify the OSPF process in this router. It is locally significant, which means that it does not have to be the same across all routers. You can choose from 1 through 65,535. I will be using the number 1 process ID. Now that we are inside the OSPF process, what is next is uh, one of the most important things you need to know when dealing with a routing protocol, because they all work similar in this case. Um, to start advertising a network, you have to run the command network plus the network that you want to advertise and its wildcard mask, and at the end the area that this network is going to belong to. In this case, it's the area zero because it's the interface uh, facing two other core router. What this command does is is two things. Uh, one is one is that it starts sending and receiving hello packets that contain the local information about OSPF, so they can establish a neighbor relationship. And the other one is that it starts advertising the network you specify, which will then be forwarded to the other routers and their networks and so on. There are a lot of other commands you can run under the OSPF process as you can see by running the question mark. But right now we are just focusing on setting up an OSPF network and have it working. Let's go to the core routers, uh, to the other core routers and do the same. First as we go to the core router too and we advertise the network interface connected to router 1, we will see that the OSPF neighbor relationship is established in a matter of seconds. So let's do the same 
for the network that connects to the end router which is router 2 and then let's do the same for the core router 3 So now that we have the core router set, we just have to go to the routers at each end and advertise their local networks. Let's go to the router 1 to see how it is done and then I will do the same with the router 2 and 3. Let's go to the router 1 and type conft and then the router OSPF process number which is 1 and then let's uh, advertise the network that connects to the core router 1 and then the local networks so let's do the same with the router 2 and 3 by now we have already configured OSPF in every router and all the networks are known across all the other routers as well. Let's run some show commands that will let us know that we have configured OSPF properly and that the networks are known across all the routers. First of all let's do a show IP route so we can verify that we have learned all the routers in the topology. So let's show IP route and as we can see, there are the routes advertised by router 1, router 2, and router 3. So we now know that we configure OSPF properly and everything is being advertised between each of the routers. Now the OSPF uh, commands to verify OSPF information. The first command I, I want to show you is the show IP protocols. This command will, it's a, a general command for all the routing protocols, but in this case for OSPF, it will show the process ID, router ID, and the networks it's advertising, as well as the administrative distance and other things as well. Um, the next command is the show IP OSPF interface. This command will show us what interfaces are participating in OSPF and the most important information to look for in the output of this command is the hello and the timers and the area number because OSPF must have the timers match in both ends of the communications as well, of, uh, as, well as the area number if one side differs it will not establish a neighbor relationship so the last command I want to show you but it's not that these are all of them uh, it's the show IP OSPF neighbors this command will show you your current neighbors for example if we run the show IP OSPF neighbors in the core router 1 we will see that we have as neighbors the, the end router that is router 1 and we will see the neighbors uh, core router 2 and core router 3 so by now you should have a better understanding of what is OSPF and how it works. Also you now know how to configure it and troubleshoot it. I hope you liked this video. If so, leave your thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any doubts, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.